Hey, good morning, everybody. It's so good to have you here with me. Uh, we're having some coffee with Rayborn, and I just want to say um, we are doing something a little bit new today. It took me a little bit while to get something set up, but I have something to introduce to you, a gift from a great friend uh, who uh, got me something that I once had some years back, and I gave it away, but have you guys ever seen one of these devices before? Do you know what this is all about? Uh, this is a really neat way of making coffee. It's made by a company that I like a lot. And uh, again, I'm going to share this to my page as we also get set. But um, it's a really cool way to make coffee, especially espresso. Now, we've been making coffee together for over four weeks. And we've done it in a lot of different unique ways. Uh, I'm sure... As you all know, I love my handy dandy French press, okay? That's always a great way to make coffee. Uh, you know, a lot of people get those V60s or they'll get a Chemex, all right? It is pronounced Chemex and not Chemex, all right? So we have Chemex over here. We've done that before. We went to our Russo Turkish roots and uh, we've used what's called an ibrik, which means a tiny pot. Right, and that kind of also makes a type of uh, type of espresso. And I left the other oh, I left it in the closet. Um, the mocha pot, right? The little Italian guy. Well, today we have something really cool. And um, again, just sharing this to my page. I was just sharing uh, that we have a new way of of making coffee, and I want us to to take a look at it. Um, and. One day I will get better at doing this faster for you guys. Perfect. All right. And we're back. Okay. You get to see the uh, profile. This is the, uh, what I hope to get cut this week. I'm going to be reaching out to a friend of mine, hopefully soon. So we, again, something I want to share with you guys. By the way, good for joining Jeannie. Good to see you, Janet, Michael, and uh, Dana. So have you guys ever seen this device before. It's actually multiple devices here, but they all go together. Uh, it's a really cool way to make coffee. And like I said, we've been making coffee with a lot of different ways. We've had the French press. We've done it with a Chemex, all right? Some people call it a V60 if it was a little bit smaller. Not Chemex. Yeah, Dana's right. I think air press is really, really good. And I have been so blessed. And then we have the Ibrik. All right, that's the uh, Russian Turkish coffee where the grinds are still in with the things that you drink. Okay, and I've been letting my tea kettle uh, right over here just kind of cool down just a little bit, so buying some time. But yeah, this is called the Aero Press. Literally, Aero meaning air and press, you know, push down. And you know what's cool about this? The people who make the Aero Press are the same people that make the best and worst frisbee out there, which is called the Aerobi. How many guys remember buying Aerobis and you enjoy them for like, what, 5, 10, 15 minutes tops, and they like fly a football field, and then you throw it, and then your friend throws it, and you throw it right back to your friend, it goes way over their head, out into some random woods and bushes, and no one gets it again. So the AeroPress, uh, not only is it made in the USA, uh, they make a really cool frisbee. It's, it's the thing that looks like a disc with a big hole in the middle. Flies forever. Well, they also created the AeroPress with the Aerobi. So a little, little factoid on that. Um, I want to teach you a little bit about best practices. And since, Dana, you're watching and you use the AeroPress, maybe you do something I don't, and I'd love to learn more. Um, the first thing is this, they provide you with some paper filters. You can get metallic ones if you want to reuse metallic over paper. Um, but I kind of hard to kind of hard to show you, but I took the filter already and actually I rinsed it and I pressed it. Um, they say that it helps either clean the paper cuz you know there's particulates in the paper that might get into your espresso, so you want to go ahead and just rinse the paper that's there, whether you just put it under water, or you could literally, as I did, I, I poured some water in here and I put the plunger down, I let the water come through, so it went through it um, over pressure, and now you're you're ready to go. So, all right, wait to see if you use the inverted, oh, yeah, 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 let's see. Uh, 
Some people love using the inverted method. For me, uh, eh. So, let's see here. I think the inverted method was, you go like this, you put it on top like this, and like this. Is there a benefit to the inverted method? You tell me. The inverted method is you start off like this, you, you add in your coffee grounds, you, you place this on. We will do it inverted. All right, just to make Dana happy. All right. Well, that's going to mess with my measurements. How about this? I'll do it inverted tomorrow because i got to figure out, well, you know what? I'm going to do it inverted. Okay. I think it's easy to do. So you get a kind of a heaping scoop of your fine coffee grounds, okay? And uh, they give you this little device over here. If you're really bad at pouring, they give you, I guess, like a little, you know, a little cone to help you out. So I guess you don't lose any of your grounds, but you can go right in if you feel like you're expert level, okay? And, um, hey guys, good to see you all here. So, I'm using an AeroPress, all right? You have different levels of water that you would add in depending on how many friends that you have. Apparently, in AeroPress, you're only allowed to have four friends, okay? That's it. Can't have more than four, okay? So, you got to figure out who your BFFs are. So, that's all set. Let's see. Can I aim this better here? And I'm going to aim this down just a smidge, all right? Smidge is a real unit of uh, length. All right. I'm going to add in enough water. I'm just making it for uh, myself today because I'm lonely. And uh, <laughs> hold on here. All right. Ooh. All right. Got the plunger right here at the four level. I'm going to fill it up to the three level. a little bit beyond. I don't know if I'm a fan of the inverted method. Then the air press gives you uh, the world's coolest stirrer, okay? I mean, very practical, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's not a chopstick. It's not a spoon. This is their stirrer that they use. So you take this over here, uh, kind of let this wait for like 30 seconds. So again, Telling people we've been using the AeroPress and uh, we've used all different types of things over here. You can see our, our messy station, the Ibrik, the Chemex, the French press, and now we've got the AeroPress, which I think is a cool way uh, to be making coffee. All right, so I think that's been about 30 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little bit of a stir, okay? Oh, yes. Oh, and we're back. Hold on, guys. Okay, I switched to cellular. Okay, so apparently my Wi-Fi is somehow not doing its job. So, if you only pause, I think you probably saw some quick little snippets there. Um, they give you whatever this thing is. Dana, you can tell me what this is. As far as I know, it holds your stirrer. I have no clue what this device is for. So, all right. I'm going to place that over there. Place that over there. We have our AeroPress over here. I have my wet and filter that I have right over here. I'm gonna add this on top and you just kind of do a quarter turn. It's like those water valve handles. When making espresso, I like using smaller cups. That way you don't have to tip it too much in order to drink your coffee. I know that sounds like extremely snobby, but it is because you have a big mug, you have to like Turn your head, turn the whole thing. So the smaller the cup, the better it is for espresso, just a uh, rule, okay? Take your coffee like this, because apparently you gotta be cool, and then you're gonna flip it. Hold on here. You're gonna flip it, just like so. Okay. And with all that air in there, Hold on. 
I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to invert. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. All right. But I see what I did wrong there, which was... Uh, this might be an ultimate fail. Don't worry. I got my coffee rag with me here. Okay, so, whew. luckily you always keep your handy dandy uh, coffee towel, okay? So that way when you have spills like this, because I don't know, because I wasn't thinking, all right? I made my first cup this morning incorrectly. Dana, I'm blaming you. Because I went off course. I was going to do it the old-fashioned way, and I tried to do it inverted. But what happened was, as I, I flipped it, some of the grounds were sticking to the top. So I'm like, well, if I press it down, it's not going to go through all the grounds. But, hey, not bad. Take a look at this. I'm going to set that there. Clean this up here. Take a look at this. A shot of espresso. Not too shabby, not too shabby. So guys, make sure if uh, you, if you loved it. By the way, uh, thank you to a friend of mine who, who sponsored the AeroPress for me so I could use one. And I hope you got to enjoy seeing it being used and uh, seeing me make a big mistake with that. <laughs> but uh, but let's, let's see, grab your mug, grab your favorite cup of joe, and uh, I hope you're ready for today's devotional. Remember, it's always worth the second sip uh, when you drink this, but, but let's go ahead and Give this a shot. These are, uh, I have Central American beans, uh, El Salvador, okay. I roasted them about a week ago. Woo. It's bright. Very bright. I like that though. You know, I think the AeroPress is better than a mocha pot. It tastes, I don't know how to describe it, but it tastes really good. Um, there is a lot of pressure that can build uh, through that, but, uh, but this is a great way to make espresso. By the way, um, you can always add in hot water and you can make it a cafe Americano. Uh, so it kind of tastes more like brew coffee. This is on the stronger side, but uh, but it tastes really, really good. So again, uh, welcome to uh, the world of the AeroPress. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm glad you all got to see me make a big mistake with my inversion. Uh, but you know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to redeem myself if I'm able to, okay? And I keep making coffee stains over here. Always keep your coffee towel with you. All right, so... Well, guys, we are going through a new set of uh, devotionals, and uh, again, if you want a copy of Table Talk, I know it's backwards, uh, I can send that to you. We have extra copies at the church. If you want to stop by the church, uh, we keep them on the outside shelf so they're easy to pick up. Uh, we use the Table Talk for our men's groups, but really it's for everybody. Um, and what I love about it is that you get daily devotionals uh, in the middle and great articles um, you know, kind of on the front end and back end that cover a whole group of topics. This is a, um, you know, overview of the 20th century, the fundamentalist modernist controversy, ethics and flux, doctrinal shifts. I mean, things that have just changed over the last few hundred years. And so uh, it's really neat commentary on that. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, today's devotional. So again, uh, let's pray together and uh, let's enjoy our time and coffee with friends. So, Father, thank you for this day, for uh, uh, blessing us, for waking us up. Lord, it means that you are not done with us yet. Uh, Lord, bless our, our study of your word as we continue through Hebrews. And Lord, thank you for all the people who are watching. Please be with them today, wherever they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, today is uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yesterday was uh, May the 4th be with you and also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. <laughs> That's my old Lutheran roots coming out. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Cinco de Mayo, um, we have the 5th of May, okay? 
And uh, here we have the task of the great high priest. So we were talking a little bit about um, Jesus is our high priest who understands everything we've been to. It's Christ from above, the high priest, Christ from below. He, he has lived out our life in the most humble, in, in the most weak ways, just like us. So Jesus kind of serves two purposes. And so this is what we read here before we begin. Take one more victory sip. I've never called it a victory sip before, but okay. So, woo. You know, when you don't have espresso often, it really, it really hits you when you, when you take a sip of coffee like that compared to Americano. All right. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. This is what we read. Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God. Remember I said the priest is the one who talks to God. The prophet is the one who talks to the people. Acts on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he, the great high priest, is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. So what's unique here in our text is that Jesus is sinless. So he's not ever asking for a sacrifice on his behalf. But for the last 5,000 years of Levitical priest, priesthood, 3,000 years before this time, you had to have priests that would actually have to cleanse themselves of their sin first, approach God, and then cleanse the sins of the people. Why we call Jesus the great high priest and not the high priest is that he doesn't need to do that uh, because of his sinless nature. So let's read a few things, a little commentary about these verses. It reads here, Leaving Judaism behind to trust in Jesus means leaving behind a physical temple, the Jewish priesthood, and other things. However, it does not mean that one is without a high priest. See, we still have a high priest. In fact, to come to Jesus is to gain a better high priest, the Savior who can actually offer a sacrifice that atones perfectly for sin. He doesn't have to do anything extra. He declares and he covers sin like that, okay? The author of Hebrews spends most of chapters 5 through 10 making this argument, and he begins to lay down the foundation for today's passage. Hebrews chapter 5, first four verses, sets up Jesus' appointment as a superior high priest by considering the means by which the old covenant high priest was appointed and by looking at some of the high priest's duties. First, we see few duties of the high priest back in the day was that Every high priest is chosen from among men and appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God. Fundamental to the work of the high priest is that he must be able to act on behalf of men. Okay, so that's number one. He must be able to represent the community for whom he is called to represent. The idea is that the high priest must be a part of the community despite being set apart, um, set apart uh, for his work because he will stand in for the community in the presence of God. Thus, the old covenant priests came from the Aaron family, all right, the Aaronic priesthood, okay? Aaron could represent the Israelites because he was an Israelite. So the greater high priest must be chosen from among those whom he will represent. It's like what we have in our government, right? We, we send up congressmen to go to D.C., and they are to represent us and most congressmen usually uh, that do get elected have something about they live in our community now. That's the idea, right? The duties of the old covenant high priest involved offering sacrifices for sin and ministering gently to the people. These sacrifices were for the sins of the Jews, but for his sins as well, since he too was a sinner. The author of Hebrews emphasizes that the old covenant priest, because he shared the weaknesses of the people, he can sympathize with his people. 
Of course, we have seen that Jesus can also sympathize with our weaknesses and thus minister effectively to us. However, Hebrews also stressed that while Jesus, according to his human nature, shares with us the common limitations and weaknesses of our creatureliness, he does not share with us the moral weakness of sin. Yet that in no way makes Jesus less effective as a high priest. In fact, because Jesus alone resisted every temptation, okay, successfully, he felt the full force of every temptation in every way that we will that we never will because we so often give in at the first opportunity. Consequently, Jesus can help us better than a sinful high priest, for he alone knows what it takes to fully resist all wickedness. Uh, you know, these table talks a little bit more in depth. I think they add a little bit more cultural background to the things that we talk about. A little bit different than Solid Joys. But I read this and I, and I read that despite God having a complete otherworldliness, feeling so high above all of us, he is a God who's just like us. I've used this illustration once before in a sermon in the past. and We'll kind of close with this to kind of help make sense of this. Christ from above and Christ from below. Well, how does Jesus understand you and me? There once was a father who, who said uh, that he would need to go play with uh, his kids. And every time he would go play with his two and three-year-olds, uh, when the dad would wear his, his uh, jersey shirt, the Cardinals, okay, his son went to his room and wore the cardinals. And the son would point out to the dad and says, same, same. Well, the dad wanted to go and play and wrestle with the kids. And, and so, uh, you know, here he is stepping, you know, all big and mighty over a two-year-old over here. And so the little boy drags his dad down and has him fight with him on his knees. So that way they were the same height. And the kid says back to his dad, same, same. And one day, the kid went outside and was playing with some friends. And uh, he had uh, cut himself and started to bleed a little. And he ran inside to his dad, and he noticed his dad always had a scar on him. Well, dad showed his scar, and the little boy looked at his, and he said to his father, Same, same. That's Jesus for us. Jesus has experienced everything you've gone through, even more. In fact, the text here says he suffered through greater wickedness and overcame that. Uh, but even in those instances, that's the person you would want to trust and put your hope and faith in is the one who can overcome those things. And yet, despite his ability to overcome the things that we have a hard time dealing with, Jesus relates with us. We see him on the cross. We see him in tears. We've seen him with joy. We've seen him with sadness over a friend who's passed away. Jesus can relate to you and me. As Jesus also says, same, same. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's devotional. Uh, again, pick up your table talks. Uh, Rewatch the broadcast uh, if you want to learn how to make an air press coffee with uh, a few mistakes along the way. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this time together. And again, looking forward to seeing you each morning at 8 a.m. I'll talk to you later. Bye.